morning and welcome to our live stream. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this time. Let's get ready to worship and receive what God has for us today. Amen. I 
we worship you and we come here with thanksgiving. We are so grateful. We are so grateful for who you are. We are so grateful, Lord, for everything you do for us. You fight for us. You fight all of our battles. And we know that in you we win. There's nothing too hard for you. And we just worship you today. We worship you. God of our salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our fight is with weapons unseen. Your enemies cries to their knees as we rise up in worship. When trials unleash like a flood, the battle belongs to our God. We will rise up and worship. If you know this, sing it with us. The victory is yours. The victory is yours. You're rising on the storm. Your name is unfailing. The kingdoms rise and fall. Your throne withstands them all. Your name is unshaken. What hell meant to break me? What hell meant to break me has failed. Nothing will silence my praise. I will cry out and worship.
with praise. We fill the room, Lord God, with adoration unto you, Lord. We want to decorate your throne. We want to leave our perfume, Lord, a sweet fragrance. Oh, God, we want to smell good to you. We want to smell good to you. We want to pour our worship and our praise on your throne. Whoa. Come on, continue to worship. We don't do it on our own strength. We do things through him. We can do all things, the Bible says, through Christ who strengthens us, who is our strength. Maybe you can't forgive somebody. Maybe you can't forget what happened to you. Maybe you can't move on to the next level because there's things that are holding you back. 
and it's so hard to let them go. But he is giving you the strength to do it. He is giving you the strength. You can't do it on your own. But he is empowering you. He is strengthening you. Seek him and lean on him. He will give you the strength to push through it. He will give you the strength to forgive, to let it go. He will give you the strength to move forward. He can do it so you can do it. He did it so you can do it. He did it so you can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you with a scripture in verse in First Chronicles twenty nine eleven, uh, where where David is King David is at close to the end of his uh, life, and he he looks back, and then they have this uh, great time of worship, and he says, "Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the ma majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours." Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. The victory is yours. The victory is God's. He overcomes everything. He overcame everything. And we are part of this. We are part of this victory of this kingdom that is God's. And isn't it cool to, to know that nothing can stop him, uh, that he knows all things, he has done all things, the victory is his. And we, we talk in this time of corona, we, we talk many times of limit, uh, limitations, regulations, but God is um, bigger than any of that. God is bigger than all the limitations and he's unstoppable. And I want to encourage you also with uh, Psalm 3, verse 8, where it says, From the Lord comes deliverance, or victory, or salvation. May your blessing be on your people. God is not just one who, who has victory and he, he, enjoys, the, he enjoys his time and uh, that season, uh, or this time of winning, uh, but he lets us partake of this uh, victory. And he wants to share that the blessings with us. So I want to pray with you and, and in the same uh, that Daniela prayed already that Lord we, we, we may be in different seasons, we may be in uh, different times experiencing different things Lord and, and I just want to bring these things before you Lord we individually want to bring our uh, struggles before you whether this is uh, physical, spiritual, or anything else, Lord. I just wanna, we just want to bring these things before you. And Lord, we, we know that you have victory over these things. We, we pray for deliverance over the, the things that, that we struggle with, or the, over the things that hold us back from, from going in another step, Lord, and, and a higher level. Lord, we, we look up to you. We look at you, the, the victory that you have, which encourages us to, to continue going, to, to continuing trusting in you and trusting who you are. Lord, you are, you are a God that cares for us, that wants to walk us uh, through this time, who wants to walk us through, uh, through, through the struggles in our lives, and, and helps us to, to have victory over it. Lord, I pray whether this is, uh, again, physical finances, uh, any addiction in our lives, Lord, you help us to overcome these things. That you would give us uh, the faith that you would give us the strength that you would give us the community to do this even if it means to, to get somebody else in and to, to lead and to help us one and to, with one another to, to overcome 
our individual struggles. Thank you, Lord, that you're blessing us uh, with your victory, with, with your strength and faith, but also that you have blessed us with a wonderful community to do these things together because we're better together. In Yeshua's name, amen. Can we sing that chorus just one more time? The victory is yours. You're riding on the storm. Your name is unfailing. Though kingdoms rise and fall, your throne withstands them all. Your name is unshaken. You're riding on the storm. Your name is unfailing. Though kingdoms rise and fall, your throne withstands them all. Your name is unshaken. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Ma family, a very special greeting to our King of Kings community in Herzliya. We love you all and miss being with you all so much. And fortunately, due to the restrictions, we are still unable to meet for our weekly worship services on Shabbat. However, we believe it's time for us to come together. So as long as we'll be unable to meet for a service, we would like to invite you to meet us once again for a service at the park. Bring a hot beverage, some water, and some snacks for you and your family, and meet us starting this Shabbat at 10 a.m. We'll be at Riceland Gardens near Hanassi at Sack Ben Spee Street near our building. We may have a brief time of singing and prayer in the open era along with a short word of encouragement. We also be having some fun for you and your kids as well. We hope you'll join us, but we will also be recording and streaming our regular service for you to watch later if you're uncomfortable still joining us quite yet. We will also have those available on YouTube and Facebook. We love you and can't wait to see you this Shabbat at the park. If you haven't been a part of a community group, we urge you to connect with us and get plugged into one in your area. We believe that being a part of a community group is so important and vital to our growth as believers. So you can contact us at KKCH at KKCH for more information and get plugged in. Join us today at 12 o'clock at Riceland Gardens for our first ever prayer drive. We will be driving to four different locations along the borders of Herzliya and praying for peace, for unity, for salvation over this land. If you're interested, please contact us for more information at kkch at kkch.org. We hope to see you then. Shabbat Shalom and welcome. So glad you're with us uh, today. Hope you're doing well. We're still in this time of uh, live stream especially. Uh, but we have a new thing and I, I hope you had a chance already to, to join us. If not, then just want to encourage you to, to join. Uh, we, we've been meeting in the park now uh, for the second time in a row on, on Saturday at 10 to 12. Uh, in the morning, 10 a.m., 
and it's just a, a wonderful time uh, to come together. There is not much of an agenda, uh, but we, we some bring a breakfast, some bring a coffee. Uh, we we had a great time of prayer, even worship, some some words of encouragement. But but really, the goal is to to come together uh, and fellowship, have community uh, with one another, encourage one another. Just see and and checking how everyone is doing, and it just it, it blew me away uh, last time, and I was super excited uh, to, to see uh, you guys, and just, if, if you haven't been there yet, uh, and haven't joined us, just want to encourage you, uh, it's outside, we're all wearing our masks, keeping a distance, so, yeah, join us. Also, uh, today, the, the Saturday, we were actually doing something new that we've never done before, we're doing a, or we did a prayer drive, uh, that means we, we actually go from, uh, f well, we meet, we meet together in one place, and then we drive to the four corners of Herzliya, and uh, we, we, we stop there in our cars, or some of us even went out, uh, and just pray together over the city. Uh, and it's, it's just a great way of, of uh, it's a different way. We, we meet on a weekly basis to pray over the city, but really to go to the corners to, to uh, drive through the city and, and lift up its people. Uh, it's, it's just a powerful way. So we're going to do that again, I'm sure. Uh, but as you still see, uh, there are limitations out there, there are regulations out there, but we're just trying to, to find a way to navigate us through this time and making things possible. So thank you, God, for, for your uh, for the great ideas you've given us over this past almost half a year, Lord. Lord, thank you that, you're, that no one is able to limit you, to limit who you are and to limit your word going forth and going out. Lord, we, we thank you so much for this time even. Lord, you, you pushed us in this direction of uh, online services, something that we, we maybe had in our minds for, for the future, but uh, just looking at this project would have maybe even scared us off. So you just pushed us this direction and in and, and so many other ways, Lord, you're, you're just helping us through this time to, uh, even to, to see growth in our lives and in this congregation. So, Lord, we, we just thank you and we want to give you worship and, and glory. Lord, we, we invite you into this time of uh, speaking your word, Lord. I, I pray that you would uh, speak through me, that you would use me uh, to, to deliver your message, Lord, your word. In Yeshua's name, amen. So we've been going through a series of spiritual gifts, and we had a number of weeks where we most of the time just touched one spiritual gift in 1 Corinthians 12. And um, I, I think it was a great time. I received some feedback where, where people just yeah, shared how, how much they, they learned over, this, uh, over the past weeks. And today we, we're going to go into a new series, very unique title, Yeshua's parables. We're going to have uh, four or five weeks of just looking at some parables that Yeshua was teaching. And today is, uh, is, is a parable uh, that we mentioned, that I mentioned over the last weeks. Uh, maybe not as a parable, but really the, the idea of that parable. Uh, we, we shared that. It's about stewardship and, and being faithful. Uh, to what God has given us. So it's a nice uh, bridge uh, from one series to another. So we're looking at, at the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, 14 through 30, but I just want to explain a little bit the context of this parable, as that is very important. And it's interesting. It's, uh, it's always good to, to look at what is, w when you read, when you don't read through, like from the beginning to the end of of, of a, a book or even the Bible, uh, it's always good to to see what what is what happened before my passage, what happens after, just to to see a little bit what the context of that message is. So, just real quick, what happens? What was Yeshua talking about uh, before this parable that we are talking about today? because he's going through quite a few parables in, in one, well, at least Matthew writes all these parables uh, down in, in one big thing. So 
It starts off with, with the parable of the fig tree, where Yeshua very briefly says that there, there are a number of things that are happening, and when these things happen, you know that it is near. Well, what is near? Near is Yeshua's return. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. And then uh, he, he continues saying something like, no one knows the day or the hour. Also very famous, I think. Then it continues with a parable, the faithful servant and the evil servant. And it's about a servant, a, a master who comes later than expected. And he just sees what, what his uh, two servants were up to while he was gone. Then it goes into the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. And many of us probably know that parable. Uh, it's, it's about uh, f 10 young women who are waiting for the groom to arrive and uh, there would be a whole procedure and, and, and uh, a walk to, to pick up the bride and all that. And five uh, virgins weren't, like the, their oil ran out and uh, they had to buy new oil and missed uh, this whole thing because the, the groom, of course, came when they were gone. So this is the, the setting, this is the context uh, where our parable, the parable of the talents, uh, falls into. And the, the parables and, and the, the teaching before sets the stage for our parable for today. It, it is about uh, the waiting time. It is about the in-between time. It is about the time uh, of Yeshua's first coming and uh, his return. And uh, as you notice, uh, the, the, the parables talked before, uh, before our parable today uh, talk about this time, that there, there is a time of waiting, there is a time to be prepared. And this is what it's talking about, uh, to be prepared. Uh, but that is about it. And today's parable actually tells us how we are prepared. What is the definition of being prepared? How can we be prepared? What is God expecting us uh, to look like or to do when he returns or what to do while we are waiting? That is probably a better way to put it as we may or we may not live or be on this earth when Yeshua returns. So how is this waiting time looking? How should this waiting time be looking for us or look for us when or from, from God's eyes and his perspective. So, what is readiness? We, and we see that readiness is not just a passive waiting, but it is active and God expects productivity from us during this time. So let's read Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another one two, and to another one one. To, te to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received only one, went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more, five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done. Good and faithful servant, you are faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And he who also received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you, you, 
I, Lord, excuse me, Lord, I knew you to be hard, to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I, sh I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be given or will be taken away and cast and cast the un, un, and, sorry and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth i'm honest um sometimes i'm like yes this guy was pretty lazy but at least he he put it in a safe place with trading you never know how that uh, works out, uh, especially in in our times. Uh, you 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 may have some uh, some stocks and, and or whatever you you have or, or invested your money in, and especially during this time, it goes up and down. So uh, the trading part is is not always easy, and in this time, it, it may have been more stable, and he may have traded. Uh, items or whatever and sold them to this cool show that I watched one time where they start maybe with like a super cheap car and they, they sell the car f five times and end up with a uh, decent car at least. So uh, trading is, you, you need to be creative sometimes. Uh, but what are a few things that we can note from this parable? What are a few obvious things that, that we immediately see? Well, looking back at the parable with the, the ten virgins, the ten young uh, ladies, uh, they, they may have thought, well, our job just waiting here and, and being ready for the groom to arrive is, is easy, but it, it turned out a little bit harder. Here in our parable, uh, the, the servant may have been scared just by the idea of receiving that one talent and uh, taking care of it and, and have it... Uh, have some profit off of it so that he didn't even think about the idea of just putting it in a safe place to the banker, to the bank. Uh, that's quite safe. Uh, also, maybe not in, in this time uh, right now, at least some banks. Uh, but usually that's a safe uh, place to put your money in. But anyway, he, he couldn't figure that out. He hid it. Also, what we we were uh, noticing again is that not all the servants uh, received the same amount. Each one received what he was capable of handling. So uh, that the five guy, that the five, the, the, the guy with the five talents was able to 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 um, to, to to carry a, a higher load of of this responsibility. The master knew it, and he also knew that the the, the guy with the one talent is is maybe growing or, or whatever and, and just can't handle as much. That's why he, he gave him the, the one talent to get him started. So that reminds me again with, um, with, with, uh, on our series with spiritual gifts uh, where we all don't receive uh, the equivalent. We, we don't receive uh, there's the same amount maybe of gifts or the, more, the, the, the same amount of, of power or, or whatever it is, uh, but the Holy Spirit gives us as He wishes. And I, I believe that He gives us as much as we can handle and as much as we can steward well. Here at the end, uh, we, we see that good stewardship of little things brings greater privilege and responsibility. Also, I see that with, in connection with our series on, on the spiritual gifts, where, where God sees, okay, that, that this person is handling this gift well and is developing it and is growing and is utilizing it so I can add something else. Whereas 
poor stewardship leads to, lo to losing even what one has. That is maybe a little bit more difficult to apply. And I, I don't want to say, well, if you uh, don't utilize this gift or don't develop it, God will take it away. Uh, but he may. And um, we, we're going to get to this later on a little bit more in depth. Uh, what are the, the things that Yeshua wants to teach us? What is the message that he wants to bring across through uh, this parable? Well, the first point is being ready is an activity. It is not just uh, a, a waiting room where we flip through the magazines or even a book uh, or, or scroll through our news, uh, but it is an activity to, to create productivity. It's like the master who entrusts his servants with a very valuable part of his richness. There are different, it, it's very, e very difficult for the scholars to, to tell us what a talent is. It, it goes from, uh, there's the whole different numbers, but uh, we, we can believe that it is a huge amount of money, uh, thousands of shekels, thousands of dollars worth. Uh, he, it's, 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 it's a huge part of what he owns as a master, and he entrusts it with his servants, to take care of this. In the same way, we have received from God's richness. God is entrusting us with uh, resources. He's giving us resources. He's giving us um, a, a mind to, to think, a brain to think, to develop ideas. He's giving us uh, spiritual gifts. He's giving us other gifts and talents. He's giving us a family. He's uh, giving us relationship with friends in the congregation, uh, co-workers. He's giving us finances and opportunities to, to, to witness, to, to, uh, to, to, to bring profit and productivity to his kingdom. And this is our responsibility to see how, to, to, to work in this, with the things that God has given us. He's given you and he's given me part of his richness and he wants to see that we are using it that we're not just putting it aside and saying okay well great thank you lord and um, maybe i won't see that ever again but he wants to use he wants us to use these things for his kingdom to bring profit for his kingdom and well what is profit in his kingdom well it's growth uh, for the believers it's more believers in his kingdom. Luke 12, 48, it says, For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. I think even, even the one talent guy, he has rece received so much money. Yes, the other one five times more, but uh, he, he could have also said, well, that the one person received uh, five talents and the other one maybe, maybe a little shekel or, or whatever. That would have been a little bit of a difference. But all the three people received so much. And I think we, we all, every single one of us, every believer received so much. I would never say, well, this person received so much and this person received so little. I would also, I would also, I would always start with saying, we all received so much. Maybe some received even more, but every one of us received so much. So much will be required from every single one of us as well. Much will be asked. Being ready will be rewarded. And I don't know why I don't teach on this so much, maybe because uh, th th there is not too much in the Bible that talks about it. We don't know any or very much uh, specifics about this. Uh, but Yeshua talks about this. It's not a secret. It's not something that he says, well, uh, we'll, we'll look at this afterwards and, and decide uh, 
uh, what's going to happen, whether you get something for it or not. But he says you'll be honored, you, you'll be uh, rewarded for your work. Unfortunately, in my life, this is not... I'll take the unfortunate back. Uh, let me rephrase that. It is not too much on my mind, which is unfortunate, but which is also a good thing. Let me explain this. It's a good thing because I don't want to be motivated just by the reward. I don't want to... Um, it, it's not just a job that, that I'm doing to, to cash the paycheck. I want to do something. I want to invest and, and be productive in God's kingdom because I love my Lord and I do it with my full heart and my soul because I'm part of this. On the other side, it's a little unfortunate that I'm not thinking too much about it because it is a great motivator. If you think about your, your work or whatever uh, you, you're doing, what motivates you? Well, for, for many of us, we, we go to work because of the money. It motivates us. Uh, we may work harder uh, for, for a race. We may work harder for uh, more vacation days or whatever it is in this regard. It motivates us. It should motivate us. It's a good thing. It's a good motivator. And so I, I think Yeshua's intention was also to motivate us with this. It's not only something to, to scare us off, to say, oh, well, if I don't uh, work, if I don't do anything, he may look at me at one time and like, ooh. Uh, but he wants to motivate us and, and say, hey, you're not just uh, receiving eternal life, you're not just uh, receiving uh, being part of the kingdom, but I also, I also want to reward you individually on what you have put into my kingdom. Romans 2 verse 6 says, God will repay each person according to what they have done. And then in Colossians 3.23 it says, And whatever you do, do it heartily. So that's kind of the, the motivation I was speaking about. Uh, it's, that is my motivation because I, I want to do it with my heart, with my soul, uh, because I'm part of this. As to the Lord and not to men. Okay, that's important too. Uh, we do it for the Lord. We don't, look at, we don't do it just to, to look good. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord, the Messiah. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Do it with your full heart. Do it with your soul. Do it with uh, a look toward God and uh, to his kingdom and, and with the uh, with the honor that you're part of this, that we are allowed to work in his kingdom, to be part of his kingdom, to, to, to push his kingdom forward. And on top of this, he's rewarding us for our work. Number three, which is just a continuation of this, uh, those who are, who are hiding what he has received, those who are not actively awaiting, uh, those who are not producing fruit, will receive judgment. And it's a difficult one, and it's maybe not as difficult. I wouldn't say, well, only because you didn't uh, use a gift, let's say God gave you uh, the, the, the gift of knowledge, and you really put it maybe to the side, maybe something hindered you from utilizing it, I don't think God will look at you and then shut you one day saying, hey, you didn't use this gift and uh, you're not part of my kingdom. I, I think uh, th that may be uh, a, a, an area where God said, you could have worked on this, you, you're maybe not receiving my, my, my full or your full reward, but welcome. I, I think somebody who dedicated his life, her life, to God. And he says, I want to be part of this. I believe Yeshua is the Messiah. This person, uh, if this is a genuine decision, um, will have, it's almost impossible uh, to say, well, I'm, I'm stepping away. I'm, I'm not doing anything for the kingdom. I'm, I, I'm not interested in ministering to my family. I'm not interested in 
and, and doing my tithes, giving my tithes or God's tithes to him. I, I don't want to use any of the gifts uh, for his kingdom. I, I think that would be very difficult to see somebody who's genuinely walking with the Lord, to, to see who uh, just neglecting everything. So that, I, I think the point here is, is really that uh, those who are hostile to God, those who, who just completely shut down, this is what he's talking about. Those will not uh, be part of this. So I want to encourage you, and, and we're uh, cl coming to an end here, we're closing, um, just to, to look at this waiting room, to, to um, not even there's this waiting room, but to, to understand we are waiting right now. We are, we are in a time of um, waiting for the Lord, whether we see him or not, when he returns, but God is expecting something from you. God is expecting something from me. God is, I can't do what God has intended you to do, and you can't do it for me. You have to do your own job, or you have to use your own uh, things that God gave you to take care of. God has given you a talent, two talents, five talents, ten talents, whatever. And I just want to encourage you to use it. Don't just put it uh, somewhere and uh, don't take care of it. Be productive. Be productive in your family. Be productive in your, in your, in your circles of friends, in your, in your finances. Continue to give to the Lord. Be productive when it comes to your uh, spiritual gifts, when it comes to other gifts. Be productive for God's kingdom. Use what he has given to you. And just take your eyes off others. It doesn't help to either judge others uh, or to, to say, well, I, I wish I, I would be so-and-so and had this. God made you individually as, uh, as his creation. And he has a plan for you. And he has given you things to, to be productive in your kingdom. So I want to encourage you to, to, to look at your life and to see what God is expecting you to do so that one day you will be in front of your throne and he looks at you and says, good job, my faithful servant. I want to talk at the end again quickly about this lazy servant who... who uh, was maybe scared. Well, he was certainly scared. Uh, he was maybe overwhelmed, uh, so scared and overwhelmed that he didn't even figure out the easiest thing to, to put it to the bank. Uh, but that would have meant some profit, some interest. But what he did was uh, not only not being productive, but what he did was actually harmful uh, to the master because the master was gone for quite some time. Let's say he was gone for many years. I don't know exactly how it worked back in the days where Yeshua was teaching this parable, but nowadays there's something that we call inflation and uh, your, your purchasing power is just decreasing uh, more and more. Like, let's say... Uh, today you're able to, to buy so much with a hundred shekel or a hundred dollars. In a decade from now, that will very likely be less things you will be able to purchase. So what he did was, when the master returned, he gave him the talent back. But the master wasn't able to, uh, to, to do the same thing with this talent than when he, when he left before. So what I'm saying is, what he did was actually harmful. It was just not non-productive. It was harmful to his finances. And I wonder if we see a parallel there as well. Where God has not just given you and me uh, things to steward and things to, to manage well, uh, to see if we are productive, he has given you and me these things to be uh, to, to bring his kingdom forward. If we don't use it, 
I believe also that we are some sort of harmful uh, to his kingdom. Who's, who's gonna, th th there is no other Daniel. There is no other uh, Daniela or Matthew or Mariana. There is no other you in this kingdom. There is no other one who has the exact, for, for whom God has the exact same plan for. So if this motivates you, maybe that's something as well, where it's like our laziness or passiveness is actually harmful for God's kingdom. But God wants us to, to look at him and maybe you don't know exactly what to do. Maybe uh, you, you don't know your, your spiritual gifts. Maybe um, maybe you just have a very small circle of friends. Maybe uh, you're single and you're, you don't have a family yet. But there are so many other things. That there's always somebody to reach out. There's always something to do. There's always something to be prepared for. So I want to encourage you. We have all, God has an agenda for all of us. No matter in, in which season of your life you're in. And I want to pray for you that we all would, uh, would, would, would strive to the maximum, that we would all go for uh, more productivity. You may think you're productive, and, and that this person was, was able to do double, or both of them were able to double what they've given. Well, maybe you're able to triple. Don't stop where you're at. Lord, I thank you for your word, Lord. And Lord, this is a ch challenging message. This is a challenging parable uh, that you have for us, Lord. But Lord, you, you want to see us grow. You want to see us uh, go for great things. You want us to, to, to be productive for your kingdom, Lord. Lord, and I, I thank you for not only letting us be part of your kingdom, but allowing us to, to be co-workers, to, to do this with you. Lord, you could have done this all without you. I'm sure you would have figured it out. But Lord, you want us to do this together with you. And we feel honored. Lord, what a great honor it is to, to work alongside you. Lord, thank you that you prepared us. Thank you that you have given us many things in our lives. Lord, you, you have blessed us richly. And Lord, I, I pray that you would help every single one of us to, to, to increase our productivity with the things you have given us. To find ways where uh, we, we can be an investment, where we can make investments in your kingdom. Lord, help us to, 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 to explore more of what you have given us, to, to see, to help us to or open our eyes to see how you invested into us and how you want us to use your investment, Lord. Lord, you are so good to us. You don't let us alone with these things. Lord, you bring clarity to our lives. And take the fear away, Lord. You're not uh, the, the person that was, or the God, that, that, the master that was described by the third servant. Lord, you're loving and kind and you're patient. Lord, you, you help us to, to, to grow. You, you help us in this time where when, when we come before you and ask you for help. Lord, maybe we don't know what to do. Maybe some of us just hear this right now and like, I don't know. I don't know, God, what you want from me. Lord, I pray that you would uh, meet these people, that you would meet us right now and throughout the next days where you would just open our eyes, that you would take 
away the fear that maybe hinders us even from seeing the obvious. Like this uh, third servant who didn't even get the idea of putting it to the bank. Lord, I pray that you would help us to see the obvious in our, in our lives. To do a first step to your productivity, Lord. Lord, and I pray for those who, who are being productive, for those who, who, who had a time or a revelation to what you have given them. But Lord, I, I pray that you would just continue to search for more ways to be productive, that we would increase our productivity through your help. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessing. Yeshua's name. Amen. As we close, let me pray and bless you. Ye varecha donai vishmerecha, ye ear donai panaf lecha vichonecha, ye sire donai panaf lecha vesemlecha, shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, give you his shalom. His peace. Amen.